I both had food poisoning recently and I'm going on a plane soon. So this seems like a really good video to watch. I assume it's about food poisoning. It's how one meal took down a plane with 144 passengers from Brew, which is a fantastic YouTube channel that you should be subscribed to because they upload very interesting videos. Not necessarily the most positive videos in the world, but certainly something that's interesting to watch uh, and learn from. So let's go. This would end up being the passenger's worst nightmare. For the 20 attendants working on the Japan Airlines plane, it was so far routine. The aircraft, headed for Paris, was now ready to serve breakfast. The flight attendants reheated the ham omelets and began their meal service. The pass- Okay, ham omelets? I've never had a ham omelet as like a breakfast omelet on a plane before and I've been to many planes but then again they're all going to or from America so maybe it depends on the airline but usually the breakfast options that you get is those weird little wrap panini things that have like a, maybe a little bit of cheese or ham inside and it's like kind of underwhelming and not great or you get those little yogurts which are pretty nice as well or like a scone or maybe like a little little muffin a little uh little, little blueberry muffin as well they're pretty good up, hungry after several hours of flying and excited to eat a freshly prepared breakfast See, this is where if you're vegan, it's OP. Because if you're vegan, then you don't eat the omelet. You don't eat the ham, then you don't get food poisoned. Little did they know these eggs would derail their entire vacation. The omelet had the eggs? such a severe effect on people that the plane had to make an emergency landing as its passengers fought for their lives. What? Wait, so it's killing the people as well? It can't be that bad. Shit, that's insane. Oh, this is not gonna be good. 1975, Tokyo, Japan. 344 excited 1975. Japan Airlines plane destined for Paris. Most of the travelers were salespeople for Coca-Cola and their family members. The employees had won a vacation to Paris, and Coca-Cola had arranged a flight on a Boeing 747 aircraft for the trip. The route- Oh my god, from Tokyo, Japan, all the way to Paris? That has to be a 16-hour flight or something along those lines. And in 1975, before you even had those little TVs on the plane, what do you do in the entire time? You either read a book or you try and sleep. If you don't, then you just raw dog it. You sit there and you look out the window. I don't understand those old people that just straight up raw dog the flight. They, they, they turn off the screen in front of them and they just like just cross their arms like this and they just try and sleep. They were the bravest among us. The route had three legs that began in Tokyo's Haneda Airport, had a stopover in Anchorage, Alaska to fuel up, then crossed the Arctic to land in Copenhagen, Denmark, before finally heading to the final destination, Paris. Including stops, the trip would take roughly 20 hours. The passengers would be attended by a crew of around 20 people. 20 hour flight? I don't think it's worth it. I really don't think it's- And to go to Paris as well? Of all places? Like, listen, you're going to France, all right. Pff, I'm sorry, mate, that's bad enough. But you're going to Paris of all places as well? I'm pretty sure a lot of Japanese or Chinese people have this thing called Paris syndrome, where they're like, oh, dude, Paris is so awesome. We're gonna go to Paris, it's gonna be brilliant. Can't wait to go there. The city you love, baby. Gonna eat some baguettes, it's gonna be brilliant. We're gonna go to the Eiffel Tower, beautiful place. They land there, they realize like how depressing and bad it is, and then they just get actual genuine like, psychic damage from how bad Paris is. The first leg of the trip, Tokyo to Anchorage, went smoothly. The plane then flew over the Arctic Ocean and entered European airspace around breakfast time. Earlier, sandwiches had been handed out as a meal, and now flight attendants prepared a second meal for the passengers and crew ham omelets. An hour- This must be the reason that no one serves omelets on flights anymore. I mean, I know it was back in 1975, so it was a long time ago, and things have advanced a lot since then. But man, I hate to be the meme guy, the guy that says the thing that everybody else is thinking, but flight food is just not good. I've had maybe one good flight meal, and it was a curry. And it's really hard to get curries wrong, to be fair, unless it's really bland and there's no spice in it. Curries are generally very easy to get right. Anything else is just abysmal. Half before the plane was set to land in Denmark. The pilot and first officer working on the second leg of the flight had been staying in Alaska. So they were running on a different internal clock than the plane's schedule and weren't craving breakfast. Instead, they preferred to have steak for dinner. But they weren't craving a delicious ham and cheese omelet. Don't know why. For passengers, omelets were heated up and distributed. People ate as the aircraft got closer and closer to Kastrup Airport in Copenhagen. They were only 30 minutes away from landing when it was clear something was terribly wrong. Almost 150 passengers were suddenly violently sick, nauseated, vomiting, and suffering from diarrhea and cramps. 
Oh my god, already? That's really fast. So food poisoning is like the speed running of an illness. Usually with illnesses, when you're throwing up and you're sick, it is over the course of maybe a few days, you kind of really build up to it. You're lying in bed, you're feeling not so great, and it builds up and builds up and builds up, and then you feel like you need to throw up. With food poisoning, it is immediate. Like I had it a few days ago, and at 1 p.m., I was sitting at my desk. I was like, ooh, I feel a little queasy. By 2 p.m., I was paralytic in bed. Like th The stomach needs to vacate everything that is inside of it. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit gross because we're talking about food poisoning and throwing up here, but you have to, everything must go from the stomach. It's like a buy one, get one free sale, and the DFS sale is now on, and everything must go. We have a store shutting down sale going on, and everything must be sold immediately. Everyone runs in and the food is the items and the purchasers are throwing up. There probably were not enough bathrooms to accommodate the sudden high demand. One flight really? attendant was struck as well. Probably. The two pilots were thankfully fine and were able to make a quick landing in Copenhagen. Most of the travelers were so severely ill that immediate hospitalization was necessary. That's horrible. Hospitalization from a bad egg? I can't imagine how every single omelet was contaminated. Every single omelet made everybody immediately horrifically ill. Like this must have been some pretty bad food standards in 1975, which is not really a shocker, but it was coming from Japan. And nowadays we think Japan has really good food standards. I guess maybe it wasn't so back in the day. The Paris vacation they had felt so lucky to win was turning out pretty grim, and they hadn't even reached the destination yet. But that was the least of their worries. Sick passengers were taken for emergency medical care as soon as possible. But there was a problem. None of the doctors in Denmark spoke any Japanese, and oh, very no. few of the passengers could even speak English, let alone Oh, that's English. rough. Where could they find people who could translate? Thankfully, Japanese restaurants in Copenhagen were contacted, and- we wouldn't the, I guess the airline crew might be able to translate, but asking them to do that, it's a bit above their pay grade Japanese at that point. speaking employees were summoned to the hospital to assist during the crisis. 30 of the plane's travelers were in critical condition. The oh my god. The severe food poisoning was suspected to be the breakfast omelets since people was got so bad sick about quickly it? soon after consuming them. But authorities needed to take a closer look before saying anything for sure. There was also an interesting pattern of who got sick. People who sat in the very back of the plane were fine. All the passengers who got food poisoning had sat in the front section, including those in first class. An investigation was launched. Oh, looks like this, this illness doesn't see class. Your money didn't save you this time, did it? Led by the Alaska State Health Department. Tests made on samples of vomit, stool, and leftover ham omelets picked up a bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus, known more commonly as staph, and high levels of toxins produced by the bacteria. The culprit was indeed the breakfast omelets, but where had the contamination come from. There were strict guidelines involving food preparation that should have made this impossible. Investigators traced the history of the breakfast meals and discovered some uncomfortable things. The meals were stored the in eggs? conditions that would have made it very easy for bacteria to reproduce and produce toxins. After being made, the breakfast sat in the kitchen at room temperature for six hours. And Oh, that's bad. Six hours? That's really bad. They say you can't leave rice out. You have to put it in the fridge. You have to make sure that it's not room temperature because room temperature is like a trampoline for bacteria. They say, ooh, I like this. This is a lot of fun. Come on, everybody get on, guys. It's feeling good in here. It's like a hot tub bag for bacteria. They spread and they multiply. They absolutely love it. Even though the meals were placed in a fridge for over 14 hours after that, the fridge temperature was not low enough to be safe. It's recommended that food be stored at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4.4 degrees Celsius to stop the growth of bacteria. But the omelets have been stored in a refrigerator at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. They were taken out and- Is 10 degrees Celsius even, does that even count as a fridge? I I guess maybe like it's kind of chilly, but you can be in a 10 degrees Celsius room and it'll be cold. That's not fridge cold. Stored in the plain ovens, again, without refrigeration for another eight hours before being reheated and served. They put it in room temperature for eight hours? No wonder it basically killed everyone on it. My God, I hope everyone turns out okay on this. I'm serious, if you die from an omelet on a plane, 
That's just, that's really, that's rough, man. That's a terrible way to go. All in all, this adds up to over 28 hours of storage without proper cool temperatures to ensure food safety. Plenty of time for bacteria to grow and release toxins. Exactly, you're not gonna make an omelet and leave it on your kitchen counter for 28 hours and then come back and be like, hmm, it's probably pretty safe. Although there's probably people out there that's done that. I'm gonna be honest, I've done that in the past. I've left food out for ages and then somehow if my cat doesn't eat it, I'll come along and be like, ah. Oh. Whoa, maybe it's okay. But while these storage conditions were less than satisfactory, they would not have caused illness on their own. The investigation team decided to- Wait, maybe that's why I got food poisoning. Oh my God, that, that might be why I got sick. Okay, new plan. Don't leave food out. Look closer at International In-Flight Catering, a branch of Japan Airlines based in Anchorage, and where the meals had come from. They learned that three cooks in the Anchorage- Oh, they came from Anchorage, they didn't even come from Japan, so never mind. Everything I said about Japan's food safety standards goes out the window because they came from Anchorage. ...kitchen were involved in preparing the meals, and one of them had prepared all the first class meals and the one that went to the front galley, or kitchen. The airplane had four galleys to serve the different areas of the plane, and only meals that came from the front ones made people sick. The way that they display everything on this channel is super cool. Like, I love the graphics. I love the, the amount of effort that goes into these videos. is absolutely tremendous, which is why you should be subscribed to Brew because they upload stuff like this all the time. It's really, really good. Like, it's super clear, super easy to understand. Cook had handled Danish canned ham that went into the omelets and had helped prep 220 of the plane's total 354 meals. 86% of those who ate his omelets suffered from food poisoning as- Man, he must have gone fired, fired. He must have gone so f He's more fired than anyone has ever been fired before. He is the most fired person on the planet. Result, the cook was wearing bandages on two of his fingers, and it turned out that no. under the bandages, oh. he had lesions. He oh, was no, aware of dude. blisters, which is why he covered them up, but didn't think they were important enough to report to his employer. Further, oh, dude, you're making food, mate. Come on. That's disgusting. I guess you never really know who's making your food. That could just happen. That probably happens all the time because people don't want to like send employees home if they like cut a finger. It's like, ah, just like bandage it. You'll be fine. And then you could be like, ugh, ugh, I don't want to think about it. I really don't want to think about it. Companies do not want to send cooks home. More, investigators found out that his managers did not confirm that he was in good health, even though they were required to do so. Tests yeah, see, yep. The lesions were infected with the staphylococci that had made everyone ill. It takes only a hundred staphylococci to cause food poisoning, so it made sense that people only a hundred. That's bacteria. That's thousands, hundreds of thousands. There's millions of those little buggers just going around spawning, repopulating, more so than rabbits. So sick so quickly, now that we know how long the meals were sitting out and accumulating toxins for. The toxins are also heat resistant, so the heating process of the breakfast did not destroy the contamination. But it wasn't just the cook's infection that was to blame. If the omelets had been stored according to proper food and safety guidelines, the entire food poisoning outbreak would have been prevented. It was the fact that the cook had a staph infection, combined with the managers not verifying his health, and the improper food storage all combined that led to this outbreak. If you guys, this is so easy to have happen though. First off, like someone cutting their fingers, I mean, that's when you work in a kitchen, that's like a guarantee. There's a 100% chance if you work in a kitchen, you're probably gonna cut your fingers eventually. It's gonna happen. Managers not verifying health is not a surprising thing whatsoever. So many managers, especially in America, just don't wanna send people home. They don't wanna pay people while they're not working. They don't wanna have any loss in manpower at all. 100% chance that there's some mismanagement going on in like most places. And then improper food storage, I feel like that's an easy mistake to make. It's not necessarily a thing that you do on purpose, like the managerial decisions, but improper food storage, sometimes you just forget. Sometimes there is a miscommunication. Sometimes it's like, oh, I thought you were gonna do it. No, I, I, I didn't know you thought I was gonna do it. So now I'm gonna do it like six hours later. I feel like that's an easy thing to have happen to. Taken out, or the cook had worn gloves, the whole incident could have been avoided. It was very fortunate that the plane's pilots opted for dinner over breakfast, a chance preference that helped them narrowly avoid illness. If Isn't that a rule that they have to do on flights is you are not allowed to, I'm pretty sure pilots aren't allowed to eat the same thing as each other. They're not allowed to have the same meal. They have to have a different meal. Because if one of them gets like horrifically sick and debilitated, then you need to have one other pilot that can at least fly the plane. And I think the crew has separate meals to the people on the plane as well. Because you need to make sure that there's at least one person that can fly a plane. If you're going blind, if you're going hog wild up in the air, throwing up on the 
the windshields as you're trying to guide it down through with air traffic control. Like, yeah, I don't like, uh, like it's just not gonna work. You're gonna get people killed that way. They had eaten the omelets and gotten as sick as some of the passengers. They may not have been able to even land the aircraft safely. Ever since this incident, many airlines implemented a new catering policy for cockpit crew members to eat different meals prepared by different staff to prevent a food yep. poisoning incident from taking everyone out of commission. Though the sudden illness before even arriving at the destination definitely puts a bit of a damper on a romantic couple's getaway or family vacation, at least no one was too severely affected. Or so everyone thought. Oh Though the no. The contaminated omelets hadn't directly resulted in any loss of life of any passengers that got Good. food poisoning. There was Good. unfortunately one fatality in this story. Kenji Kuwabara, 52 years old, was the manager of catering for Japan Airlines and vice president of international in-flight catering. Oh no. Did he did he take his own life because the whole thing happened and he was he was just like embarrassed about the whole thing, so he- Oh no. The investigators of the Japan Airlines food poisoning incident were very direct and honest in their approach to determine how the outbreak happened. They strongly emphasized that nobody with infected lesions should handle food, and this meant that the catering company had flaws in their system. Since management did not inspect or question the cooks about their health, and the cook was not aware of the potential risks of him handling the food. But even that mistake would have slipped by if the meal had been stored continuously at the recommended low temperatures. Again, this pointed the lesioned finger at the caterer's standards. The bad publicity and blow to the company reputation, his personal responsibility as the head of the Anchorage office, and losing face was too much for Kenji to bear. Oh, Just oh, days so after the damn. incident, in his apartment in Anchorage, he took his own life. He had worked with the that airline so for sad. 25 years, and many colleagues who were close to him mourned, along with his wife and four children. Despite no, he had, he had a wife and kids. Oh, that sucks. I wonder if that's got a lot to do with the kind of Japanese work culture. I guess, what, what can you call it? Shame culture? Where you're supposed to be very, very proud of your work. You're supposed to be very like into it. You're supposed to make sure that everything is perfect. Everything is working correctly. So if something like this goes wrong and it's like wrong on a really big level, like he made hundreds of, well, he didn't specifically make hundreds of people sick, but some of his managerial practices led to hundreds of people becoming sick. And then like the shame that you must've felt from that because of like the the cultural differences that we at least have in, in Western countries where we're like, oh, that happened? Yeah, that's bad. We'll, we'll make sure that doesn't happen again. In Japan, it's like, oh, that happened? That's, that's hard, you did that. That's bad, you did that and that's really, really awful. This incident serving as a lesson for all airlines, an NBC News investigation indicated that the airline catering industry in America has little oversight and outbreaks are not easy to track. The American FDA oversees food safety for airlines but inspects the industry a lot less than restaurants. While restaurants are recommended for inspection every six months, airline caterers can expect one every three to five years. Mr. And for so just a Mr. Bean clip. He just slipped the Mr. Bean clip in there. Love that. For actual airlines, inspections occur randomly when time and opportunity allow. Even when they do happen, many violations can be found, but there are rarely consequences. While some states may independently choose to impose more regulations and inspections, there is no standard. From 2015 to 2019, the FDA found condensation dripping onto food, fans blowing dust onto meals, thermometers off by as many as 25 degrees, raw Aww. meat contaminating cooked meat, moldy no. bread, listeria contaminations, expired food usage, live Stuck. insects and birds, and oh. rodent feces. From oh my god, it just gets worse and worse and worse. I was expecting to be like, also, the crew just started defecating on the food and then mixing it in. They called it extra seasoning. I it's just get worse and worse. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go on planes anymore. You know what? It's time to start intermittent fasting. Whenever you go on a plane, just fast. But then again, this sounds bad, but it's no different in like fast food places. It's no different in restaurants. It's no different in supermarket food. You walk in, you get a Tesco meal deal. You grab yourself a chicken and bacon sandwich with a packet of salt and vinegar crisps. Like the sandwich is gonna go through the same 
things that all this airplane food goes through. I mean, you you just hope for the best. We just walk through life, raw dog a sandwich every now and then, and hope for the best. October 2008 until late 2019, the FDA issued almost 1,500 food safety citations to 16 airlines and the three major American airline caterers. Some of these included serious issues, like not keeping food at the correct temperature, and we all saw what that led to earlier. Despite the violations, no caterers have been shut down. According to food safety expert Gene Dibble, there are six foods to avoid if you are That's a great name. worried about food safety on airplanes. Dairy oh, okay. products are most prone to spoiling when not stored in cold temperatures. For some reason, they give out a ton of like ice cream and yogurt, but you know that an ice cream will be good because it should be frozen. So ice cream should be good if it's like a packaged magnum, a little magnum, it should be fine. A little ice lolly or something like that. Should be all right. Yogurts are a little bit more dangerous. Ice is a surprising one, but bacteria can survive on cubes and not all attendants may be diligent about washing their hands or wearing gloves while handling ice cubes. Deli That's true. This is also a really big problem I've heard in some, some countries, I think maybe like Thailand or Vietnam, where you're supposed to ask for no ice in drinks because there can be a lot of bacteria in the water. So if you put ice in drinks, that it will dissolve, obviously, and the bacteria will get into the in, into the drinks. So even if you get something like a beer, which is supposed to be sterilized and, and pretty safe to drink, if you get ice in it, which you don't get ice in beer, but apparently in some countries you do, don't get ice in your beer, there can be bacteria in there. So it's a good idea to stay away from ice if you don't fully trust the water supply. If you wouldn't drink from a tap, then don't get any ice in those areas because it's the same water. Deli meats are another thing to watch out for because deli they meats. are consumed cold and don't go through a reheating process that can help kill bacteria. Raw fruits and vegetables have the same risks. With a melon, for example, bacteria can double every 20 minutes if the fruit is not properly stored. Other high-risk produce include leafy greens like lettuce and sprouts. Lettuce is the most bacteria plant I've ever heard of. Every time, there's always E. coli on lettuce. There's always some romaine lettuce has terrible bacteria on it. It will give you diarrhea and kill you if you're not careful. Every time there's a product recall, every time there's uh, an announcement that goes out, watch out, it's always less. Why is there so much bacteria on lettuce specifically? Uncooked rice often contains bacteria that can survive cooking temperatures. And if the rice is cooled or sits in the wrong temperature, the spores can grow and make someone very sick. Rice needs to be reheated at 165 degrees Fahrenheit in order to be totally safe to eat. Fine. My mom always told me like never eat cold rice. Never eat, like reheat rice, never do anything with the rice. And I was trying to think, I was like, why is she saying this? It doesn't make sense because when you make fried rice, you're supposed to use already cooked rice. So why would you not be able to eat it? That doesn't seem like it makes sense. And it, I guess it's because she grew up in a time where fridges maybe weren't that good or food safety standards weren't that good with, with rice specifically and maybe like Chinese restaurants. And it would make people sick all the time. Make people sick all the time. So you can eat cold rice. You can eat cooked rice afterwards. You just need to make sure that it's like stored correctly so you need to make sure that it's cooled down and put into a fridge that's the correct temperature so make sure that it's nice and cool and there's no bacteria growing up on that because you will get very sick. Shrimp, a first class staple, can host many undesirable pathogens. Oh, that seafood's bad for that. A 2015 study by Consumer Reports found that 60% of frozen shrimp tested were positive for Salmonella, Vibrio vulnificus, Listeria, or E. coli. 2% contained a superbug called Staphylococcus aureus. All seafood is risky, but shrimp and oysters are the most dangerous. Shrimp is collecting every bacteria it possibly can. It's like Ash Ketchum of bacteria. Safer options include soup, stews, and curries that are usually reheated many times at high temperatures that kill See, curries. bacteria. Bread curries are the goat of aeroplane food. I mean, just the goat of food in general. Curries, some of the best food that you can get. The national dish of the United Kingdom, the chicken tikka masala. Curries, once again, showing their superiority over other types of food. Crackers, packed baked goods, and those classic airplane pretzels are also pretty safe. So, there's no need to cancel your upcoming trip or starve yourself on a flight. Okay, well, now to the intermittent fasting part then. Well, thank you, Brew. This is another fantastic video from Brew. Again, please subscribe to them. They do absolutely amazing videos. And if you want me to react to something, let me know my Discord server. Also, I have a, I have a G subs code now. I have a G subs link. Uh, code powers. It helps me if you buy stuff on G subs and you use my code. You can get caffeine free things. You can get caffeine full things if you want. But it's just delicious drinks and you can get shakers and everything. Uh, it would be really cool if you did use my link.